Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Bajaj Consumer Q1 FI24 Results Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note, that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Karan Bhuvania from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nirav. Good morning, everyone. It's our pleasure at ISEC to host Q1 FY24 earnings call for Bajaj Consumer Care. From the management today, we have Mr. Jaydeep Nandi, Managing Director, Mr. Dilip Kumar Malu, CFO, and Mr. Richard Disuza, AP Finance. I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Jaydeep Nandi for his opening remarks and then we can open the queue for Q&A. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Karan, for hosting this call. Good morning, everyone, and I'm pleased that all of you have joined in. Uh, let me take you through the performance of the company for quarter ended uh, 30th June 2023 before we open the floor for questions. The overall hair oil market witnessed a recovery in both value and volume terms after eight quarters and reported a value growth of 4% nearly and a volume growth of 3% in Q1 compared to the corresponding quarter of the previous year. The industry registered a growth of 7% in urban markets as compared to 3.7% in Q4-23. Rural markets which have been depressed was also flat this time compared to decline of 5.6% witnessed in Q4 FY23. The market in Q1 saw a recovery across all categories of hair oils. The company reported a consolidated sales of INR 265.7 crores resulting 8% value growth with a slightly higher volume growth as compared to the corresponding quarter of the previous year. The hair oils portfolio of the company grew at 9% in the quarter and, uh, and double digit volume growth. Uh, standalone sales grew by 6.5% with a strong double digit growth in international business. <clears throat> Consolidated gross margins for Q1 uh, stood at 54.7%, similar to uh, the corresponding quarter of the previous year. On a sequential basis, gross margins improved by 60 basis points with softening of uh, key raw material cost, mainly RMO. The EBITDA in Q1 FY24 stood at INR 49 crores, which is a 30% growth over the same period last year. The EBITDA was at 18.4%, which is an increase of 310 basis points against the same period last year. On a sequential basis, the EBITDA margin expanded by 100 basis points. Back for the quarter, uh, registered a growth of 36.4% at INR 46.2 crores compared to the previous year. The general trade saw 5% value growth on a sequential basis and it was flat on year on year basis after a long time recovering well. Uh, Urban continued to steer growth on back of wholesale and retail royalty programs which you have been running for the last 7-8 quarters and they continue to do well. Rural, on the other hand, saw, saw recovery on a sequential basis with specific initiatives to improve distribution through LUPs in the rural markets. The sales capability building initiatives implemented last year as well as channel management programs have started yielding good results. Modern trade continued its, its growth journey uh, well, registering a growth of 34% supported by customer-specific activation plans. E-commerce business also delivered a robust growth of 55% in the quarter. Our first ever online beauty fest in partnership with Flipkart to build equity around almond drops saw excellent results. The channel has also been instrumental in further scaling up of the NPD portfolio. International business has been scaling up well as planned and has registered a healthy growth of 42% over last year and 32% on a sequential basis. Robust performances were delivered by Middle East and Africa and the rest of the world regions. The appointment of new distributors led to strong growth in these markets. Local operations in Bangladesh is scaling up as planned where NPD pipeline is being created to expand portfolio. ADHO grew by 9% in value terms compared to the same period previous year and 6% on a sequential basis. ADHO growth was well distributed across all packs. This is the second successive quarter with robust ADHO sales. 
ADHO was supported with strong media presence across quarters with a HSM SOV of 17% versus 15% last year, supplemented with an increasingly higher digital presence. The TV and social media campaign with new ambassador Kara Adwani is being well received and is performing well across all brand metrics. Metrics. <clears throat> we have also improved our visibility and continued with sustained investments on e-commerce platforms. Harnessing artificial intelligence to paint a new picture of almond drop nourishment for hair and skin, we launched our first AI creative, which is a pioneering work in the hair oil industry. The creative has been receiving extremely good response and an appreciation amongst the younger uh, consumers in the social media space. The community marketing initiative saw us reach 1.3 crore women across 348 online communities. The chatter on almond as an ingredient improved from 23% in March to 89% in June, with brand SOV moving from 49% to 67% in these communities. Influencer marketing with 70 key opinion leaders amongst dermatologists, nutritionists, and lifestyle influencers helped us reach out to 38 lakh people. This resulted in approximately 78% uplift in glance views on Amazon and 7 lakh plus views on Quora. Common drop extensions scale up continues as planned, aided by digital and uh, digital media and visibility spends. AD Serum was extended to select modern trade chains in the quarter and in uh, attraction in this outreach. Two new OT specific SKUs of Almond Drop soaps are planned to be launched in Q2. The AD extension portfolio is being further expanded with two launches that have happened in this month, which is uh, AD Nourishing Body Lotion and AD uh, Anti Hair Fall Shampoo. This range, as we had mentioned earlier, will be continued to be expanded in the next, uh, next coming quarters as well. Consumer offtake and distribution built up has been scaling up as per plans for coconut portfolio, resulting in market share gains. By 100% pure, coconut was supported by TV media in Maharashtra and digital media in key HSM markets. LUPs are being rolled out in HSM to further increase distribution and trials. Amla portfolio grew by 16% on a sequential basis as HSM markets rebounded. Larger packs were supported with consumer offers. With material price stabilizing, small packs are being activated in select states to drive further distribution, penetration, and growth. Leveraging the Bajaj brand, the company launched its first offering in the personal care uh, non-hair oil uh, category under the Bajaj ethnic range with the Bajaj 100% pure henna this quarter. The product has higher loss in content than leading national brands and is priced at parity with them. We'll see more launches uh, under the Bajaj ethnic range in the coming quarters. In Q1, we also launched two new variants under the Nomax brand directed towards blemish removal, which overlaps with coat benefit and will be marketed based on trending ingredients known for their efficacy. In this case, it has been the <coughs> pore uh, cleaning face serum based on salicylic acid and skin clearing face serum based on niacinamide. The variants were launched in e-commerce with initial listings uh, happening on Amazon, Flipkart and Nike. The ad spends for the quarter was at 44.2 crores, which is at similar levels on an absolute basis as compared to last year. We will continue to invest in ADHO and NPD portfolio with, it, with an increasing focus on digital media to capture our new age customers. The consumption prices for LLP were higher by 16% for the quarter as compared to the same period last year. There was a slight increase in LLP prices in April and May compared to Q4 FY23 on account of refinery shutdown in Southeast Asia and increase in crude prices with slight correction being witnessed in June. RMO continued to decline on a good harvest crop in mustard and overall correction in global edible prices. On key raw materials, uh, while glass prices were up by 10%, pet prices have decreased by 8%. Multiple initiatives were undertaken in both raw material and packing materials through a combination of optimization of specifications, alternate vendor development, development of alternate material to reduce material cost. These initiatives led to a saving of two crores in the quarter. Productivity improvements in operations were achieved through a combination of initiatives in lean, automation, and process improvements. Our commitment towards the environment and uh, sustainability and governance continue to, as we constantly strive to minimize our carbon footprint and greenhouse gas emissions by focusing on resource optimization and reduction of wastages. Major initiatives including ETP water reuse project execution in Guwahati, 
STP commissioning in Ponta Sahib and sustenance of water conservation led to reduction in water consumption by 15% in Gauti and 68% in Ponta Sahib plant. Efficiency and productivity improvement initiatives in manufacturing led to reduced energy consumption with 26% improvement in Gauti and 9% in Ponta Sahib. Machine automation helped reduce laminate wastage by 35% in Gauti and 40% in Ponta Sahib. Looking ahead with the scale up of our existing portfolio, new launches under the Bajaj Almond Drop extension and the Bajaj Ethnic range along with strong execution across channels will be the leading factor for driving top line growth and expansion of portfolio. Additionally, our continuing journey on cost optimization, automation and digital transformation will continue to bring about improved efficiency in operations. With that, I end the opening remarks and open the sessions for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Nuama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on uh, good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is on the modern trade and e-commerce. Uh, you have seen very high growth, so I wanted to understand from a product mix perspective and your profitability from these two channels versus Kirana. Uh, how does this compare? And medium long term, do you see this as uh, almost 20, 25 percent of your uh, business? Because most other consumer companies are already uh, there. So, where would you see uh, this number as a percentage of India business? Uh, thank you, Avnesh. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, fair question. Uh, in modern trade and e-commerce, both as you are aware, we are under index for quite some time and in the last uh, six, seven quarters, we have been continuously scaling up. Both the uh, segments have uh, quarter on quarter been delivering pretty, pretty strong growth. At this stage, if you look at between the both the channels put together, we are uh, having a saliency about 17% modern trade being a little higher than e-commerce. And this we expect, as you rightly said, between 20 to 22 percent is clearly we see happening in the near short term because uh, what has happened worked for us, uh, very different things happening at modern trade and e-commerce. In e-commerce, I think, uh, if you look at, we have had very, very strong joint business plans with all the big players like Amazon, Flipkart, Nike, etc. And I think with very clear directionally what we want to do both for almond drops as well as for the new products portfolio. So the new products portfolio have actually been uh, delivering pretty strong numbers as far as e-commerce is concerned. Profitability-wise, modern trade, and I think uh, this is pretty uh, well-known, modern trade is at times higher than general trade, at times uh, at similar levels uh, with general trade, very rarely going below general trade. So modern trade is actually a pretty profitable business. Uh, E-commerce obviously is a little lower, uh, but still uh, decently profitable now that the scale-up has happened, and almond drops still remains a very significant contribution as far as e-commerce is concerned. Some of the specific e-commerce stoke modern trade excuse that we had launched uh, in almond drops just to ensure that the interplay between general trade and modern trade is reduced have worked extremely well, some of the larger packs. So, in fact, uh, this is a... Uh, so nice position we are sitting in where we are launching newer SQs in almond drops, larger SQs in almond drops in general trade, where the, today actually uh, general trade has a larger SQ than uh, a 700 ml SQ has been launched in uh, general trade, which is, uh, which is getting fantastic response. As you are aware, 650 ml was launched in almond drops just to uh, ensure that it has a different uh, SQ in modern trade and e-commerce, and now we have a 700 ml. Both the SQs are actually doing pretty well. So, in that sense, it's a win-win situation for us where we have added new SQs and there is a much lesser conflict between the two channels. So, this is where we are. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, my second question is on coconut hair oil. Uh, so, Copra, obviously, there has been a big deflation. Uh, 
you are a small player there i see a lot of promotions from you especially on modern trade e-commerce uh, so would you see this deflation in popra as a, a very big opportunity from a 3 5 years perspective uh, or uh, the incremental approach essentially in the existing distribution try to get some share uh, incremental kind of approach would be there or you see that uh, uh, this could be a very big opportunity over the 3 5 years even in the kirana modern trade e-commerce is easy to do by one plus one offer but i want to understand from a kirana and profitability and market share overall holistic perspective uh, longer term where do you see coconut hair oil business as you said uh, uh, even in a last call that coconut actually is uh, gives us a double digit abita uh, the, the way we have done our sourcing and the way we have been able to get the product out in the uh, marketplace so focus has always been to initially get into modern trade e-commerce get the product on the shelf and then basically it's going into digit it has been a, a little bit of a reverse flow so modern trade e-commerce actually started about 6 quarters back uh, the launch the real national launch of coconut happened for us 4 uh, 4 quarters back exactly this quarter last year uh it has been scaling up well uh hs some markets have been doing well now we have identified few specific markets where we feel that strategically we can do a lot more as far as coconut is concerned initiatives are being taken there and that's how you see uh, now a tv ad as far as coconut is concerned so we are getting a, a little aggressive as far as coconut is concerned because that's a large market and we feel that there is enough and more to be played our product one of the key things that has been liked by the customers that our product that is seen to be uh, extremely good in terms of quality maybe better than uh, some of the other uh, other uh, players which are there in the marketplace uh, so so that has been a big use fee which has been liked by the consumers and we think that there is a good potential pricing wise uh, those will be more tactical i mean uh, the it will always be cyclical any commodity will be cyclical so whether copra prices go down or go up i think in the long term it will just impact the abitas for uh, those particular uh, quarters but on a overall basis i think we have a long term aspiration as far as this product line is concerned anyway it fits in well with our entire oil portfolio uh, and it being the largest category uh, we saw that there is enough opportunity for us and in the last six quarters results have been encouraging to be able to invest more in this brand So sure, thanks. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Percy Pantaki from IFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir. Uh, uh, I just wanted to understand your gross margin movement on a YOY basis. Uh, both uh, uh, LLP and vegetable oils uh, would be down uh, quite materially. Uh, but on a YOY basis, the gross margin is relatively flat. So what is the reason for that sir yeah so so if you look at yeah you're right llp has gone down uh, we have also looked at if you look at our uh, uh, actually on a uh, consumption price basis llp is higher by that is what i also mentioned llp prices are higher by about 16% it is the rmo which has gone down compared to last year this quarter llp is higher by 16% rmo is down by about close to 20 so so is this just some vagaries of your uh, stock that you are consuming high price stock or something or uh, uh, i mean is that uh, true even on a spot basis that llp is higher than last year uh, so this is on consumption basis next quarter you will see our consumption prices for llp will be uh, will be uh, lower because anyway it will have a lag price so purchase price versus uh, purchase price versus consumption price there will always be a, uh, a be about a quarter lag right right but i mean uh, uh, forgive my ignorance on this but because llp is a crude derivative does it exactly move in line with crude or uh, they have a very different demand supply drivers and therefore doesn't always move in line with crude what what because see crude is down like 30 35% on a yy basis if i'm not mistaken so uh, would we uh, once your high stock inventory gets exhausted should we be expecting a similar kind of uh, decline in the consumption of your uh, llp uh, prices also Okay, so firstly, firstly, just to uh, clear the first point, uh, 
like the movement of uh, LLV prices went up uh, uh, last year and the reduction happened in Q2. So you will see the Q2 may the LLP prices correcting as far as consumption uh, is concerned. As far as LLP to crude ratios are concerned, if you look at a long term long term graphs for five years, etc. Yes, they do replicate, but obviously LLP is not a direct a derivative with a very small component of uh, uh, of uh, crude itself, and hence. Based on the demand supply equation of uh, dynamics of the demand supply itself, there is a lot of uh, variation of the LLB prices. So it will not always, at least on a short term, be reflect the crude prices. Uh, crude prices. So it can both be favorable as well as the unfavorable. In this stage, this stage it is decently favorable. So we should see some improvement in quarter two. So would would it be fair to say that quarter two on a YOI basis your consumption price will be down like 20 25 percent times? No, I don't think I don't think those kind of uh, very high numbers uh, would be looked at. But we see that uh, the trend. Or, or it will also be a function of because we are sitting just about uh, 40 days into this quarter, and uh, there is another 80 days in this quarter or whatever now 50 days in this quarter is uh, still left, and uh, I think. The purchase price of LNP for the next two months also need to be looked at. So it will be difficult sure. to predict what it will be at the end of quarter two at this stage. Sure, sure, got it. Uh, secondly, wanted to understand your uh, product mix. See, ADHO has grown on a YOI basis 9%, which is higher than the overall company uh, growth rate, which means that ADHO's percentage contribution to uh, the total sales has actually increased on a YOI basis. So just wanted to understand why this is happening because the other products are very nascent and they should be growing at a very fast clip at this point of time and the ADHO contribution should be actually falling rather than increasing. So if you look at on a um, um, Q1Q basis, uh, the new products have grown by 23%. If you were to just trace back last four quarters back, Hello? 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 Hello, operator, can you hear me? Hello. Pasi, do you have Hello. any follow-up question? No, the management line uh, went blank for the last uh, one, one and a half minute. Sorry? The management's line went blank for the last one, one and a half minutes. We could not hear anything. Uh, so is it? Yeah. Was it? Okay, uh, so uh, till what point did you hear? Because I, uh, I had been speaking. So, so the only thing I heard was that on a QOQ basis, it is up 23%. After that, I couldn't hear anything else. Uh, so basically, what I was telling you is about uh, last quarter this year. Uh, last quarter, uh, uh, sorry, uh, last year this quarter, uh, we had three launches that had happened. We had done the national launch of CNO in general trade. So that had a high base. We also launched the uh, almond drop moisturizing soap uh, in April, and we had a launch of the uh, cocoa onion in March, which had that uh, which had that base as well. So, so that's where last quarter, last year, this quarter, the bases were very high. But on a sequential basis, if you look at all the products have been uh, tracking pretty well. I mean, CNO has been growing. Amla portfolio has grown. The the smaller risk of almond serum, uh, argan, etc. have been also doing well. So, so that track continues to grow. So NPT. So what is the ADHO percentage contribution this quarter, sir? So it is about 85.5, about close to 86 percent. Okay, okay, sir. That's all from me. Thanks, sir. Yeah. So those Thank numbers you. have gone up from seven. Ninety-three percent used to be ADHO contribution. It went down to 85 now it's at 86 i mean that trend will continue i mean a percentage here and there we are not really worried i mean we also wanted adho itself to grow robustly so right so, yes oh, yeah. okay sir okay
Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Spark Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, sir, uh, you called out rural recovery in your comments uh, this time. Uh, so in past four or five years, we have seen for FMC sector that there has been many false starts on rural uh, recovery. Uh, so how do you see uh, rural recovery uh, this time and how sustainable you feel this can be? So having said that rural has recovered, I would still watch out on rural. I think uh, well, what you can see in urban, clear, robust growth across markets, etc. Rural, it has been sporadic. Some of the numbers that have come for us are also based on certain initiatives we take. So rural, I will still say that it is still a watch out situation. It's not a recovery that is very, very strong that has happened. Yes, it is that major declines that we were seeing quarter on quarters seems to have flattened out. It is now tracking on base. But if you look at robust recovery, it is still not there. At least not that we can witness it immediately. Sure, sure. Uh, so second question pertains to gross margin, uh, and then you partly answered uh, Percy's uh, question. Uh, so uh, so uh, theoretically, uh, most of the FMC companies are now very optimistic about the uh, raw material or input uh, scenario uh, turning into tailwind in coming quarters. And, and I believe the same could be true for us also. Uh, so uh, in that scenario, would you, uh, how would you kind of uh, uh, play that tailwind? Would you pass it on to consumer or would you kind of uh, repair the margin damage that we have seen in last uh, one or two years because of input inflation? Uh, you, you'll prioritize that over passing it on to consumer. So that's, that's the question, Mark. So, so we'll uh, we will look at it uh, a little dynamically and uh, dynamically, strategically and tactically, all three. So, uh, so in terms of dynamics, we'll be also observing how what is happening in the competitive landscape and if we need to react at certain, uh, certain stages. Strategically, I think uh, we see some opportunities in few SKUs for an increase of price, and maybe we'll uh, look at some price increases in certain SKUs in ADHO in the in the second half of the year may not be this quarter but at least in the second half of the year and thirdly uh, in terms of tactically we might react in few strategic markets and look for uh, a little stronger consumer offers in certain specific SKUs where we feel that there is chance for both us to improve our distribution as well as improve consumer offtake as for us and uh, create consideration for our brand so all three will be doing in a mix uh, overall result uh, will be a result of what successes we see in each of these, but these are the three things we will do as far as our uh, looking at uh, prices are concerned. Sure. It will also, it will also be a function. Sorry, I'll just uh, complete that. It will yeah, also be a yeah, function please. of the demand scenario. I mean, not only competitive space, but also demand scenario. If you see demand scenario easing out and we are able to pass on stronger price increases, we might even be looking at that. Yeah. Sure. But sir, uh, versus pre-COVID, uh, when I look at our margins, uh, we are almost uh, on trailing 12-month basis. Also, we are at 50% uh, uh, of, of where we were, uh, 30 to 16 now, uh, on, on TTM basis. Uh, so uh, from that perspective, do you think that uh, there will be also some sort of priority to rebuild the margin profile also because there has been a very sizable erosion in our numbers which have happened on, on uh, profitability front? So we look at both. I mean, in fact, if you look at um, maximizing profitably at certain point of time, I mean, at that point of time, the focus was only on ADHO, maximizing profitability, and uh, uh, some more investments possibly could have been done to make the business a little more robust. So while we have embarked on that journey, the, uh, the raw material prices have hit us, and I do not see the 15, 19, the kind of benign scenario that was there as far as raw material uh, was there uh, to be replicated anytime soon. So there will be a bit of 
uh, I don't think going back to those kind of numbers uh, seems very realistic. But clearly, the focus would be on improving uh, the margins. Finally, at the end of it, uh, that's what we'll uh, call out, and that's that's the direction we have taken. But at the same time, also improve our uh, portfolio portfolio coverage. I mean, uh, today we are at that 14-15 percent as far as the DOG is concerned, and we have called it out that we'll look at a 30 percent because, as a, as we have been continuously saying, it is more our absolute EBITDA numbers that we'll continue for, continue to look at. While we have not yet been able to surpass the numbers as far as EBITDA is concerned, but I think directionally we are going there, and we will be more focused on improving our overall EBITDA uh, EBITDA number with a top line consistent top line growth rather than look at a percentage EBITDA. Uh, as one of our key targets. Uh, thanks, sir. That's all. I'll, I'll come back and give. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. A request to all the participants, please restrict two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. Next question is from the line of Kostov Bhubna from BMSPL Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great. So I had two questions. First is on the coconut oil market. Could you just share with us what's the total market size and what rate is the market going at? And who are the big players in the coconut oil uh, market, which Bajaj will now be competing with? And, uh, you know, in the next three to five years, uh, where do you see Bajaj's market share in this coconut oil space? See, the coconut market is a uh, pretty large market. In terms of Nielsen numbers, it's close to about 5,000 crores. So on a, uh, that's on an MRP basis. So if you look at net sales, it's about 3,500 odd crores. Uh, it's a, a pretty substantial part of the hair oil market. The market has been growing uh, decently well. Uh, it's about close to 40% saliency, as I said. Uh, it's a bad growth of about 1.3%. But the overall market actually did grew, and in terms of uh, quarter one, it registered about a 5% growth overall uh, as far as all India is concerned. Uh, so coconut has been having a healthy growth uh, uh, on a regular basis. As far as we are concerned, we are still a very small player. Uh, we have some aspirations. I do not want to call out the market share numbers, but we have seen that with our equity, both the both the both the product that we are offering and the brand Bajaj. It has seen good traction uh, in the initial stages, so we feel that uh, there is a clear scope for our distribution expansion across so many markets. So we have identified two focus markets where we are taking up, uh, taking up the product in a big way, and maybe we'll see how that scales up. Uh, so two uh, new SKUs in the uh, low unit packs are also being launched in Coconut so that we can scale up distribution even in our stronger markets. So in the next few years, I think Coconut is a uh, decent product for us. And my uh, next, my second question is, you know, when you were given your EBITDA mark uh, of 18 to 20%, what were the assumptions you were taking for, for your raw material prices? Because, you know, I'm just trying to link, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but if you could just provide some perspective. Uh, I'm trying to understand how to relate crude to your uh, RM prices, because, you know, in the last many weeks, Crude has actually jumped back recently from its lows. So was wondering how do we relate, you know, crude to LLP and RMO, if you could just provide some help and how should I look into it? Absolutely correct. So 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 crude clearly is range bound now. I mean it was showing clear deflationary trends. It is being it is being range bound now. So so the we we take some assumptions based on at any point of time for the next three quarters to four quarters, what kind of what kind of raw material prices indexes that we'll have based on that we decide our strategy and uh, put our put our numbers so based on what we had estimated as far as uh, crude and uh, crude and rmo is concerned rmo has been tracking on that and crude actually speaking is also tracking on similar levels so based on that we feel that that 18 to 20 percent uh, this year is uh, doable and that's where we would like to keep it at. yeah okay thank you thank you Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nisar Vakaria from NV Alpha Fund Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. This is Shubham Yo from NV Alpha. Uh, my question was that uh, if you heard right, we spent 44 CRs in advertising in this quarter, which roughly amounts to about 18 19% of uh, 
as a percentage of sales. Will this number flatline at some point of time and will we start seeing trading leverage coming in or is this the kind of spend that we envision uh, in the short and medium term? So with ADHO, see with ADHO remaining a focus, even if you see, even in, if you were to compare with last year, just to give you a, a quick clarity, if you were to look at the numbers from last year versus this year, you will see there is a, a drop of about two crores as in absolute numbers and in percentage numbers as well. Now percentage numbers, exactly that's the trend we would like to keep it at. As the sales start moving up, we would like to keep the absolute more or less similar to these numbers so that the percentages keep dropping. I mean, that's how you would have your economy of scale. ADH on the other hand, just to clarify, we have not dropped. In fact, ADH has been slightly higher than last year. Last year, if you look at at this time, there were two national ads happening for Coponian as well as Soap. Now, most of them have moved into the digital space, so where the spends are much lower. So ADHO investments as well as both uh, TV as well as digital will continue. The percentage will continue to remain as far as ADHO is concerned. So if ADHO keeps growing, we would like to. So there you will not see too much of economy of scale. We would keep on investing as the brand uh, sizes. While in the other brands, there will be some uh, scale that will uh, come up uh, to our advantage. That's what we see as uh, the overall picture to be. So out of the uh, many products that we have launched uh, over the last one, one and a half year, which product portfolio do you think has got maximum potential now having tested the markets or which can drive this uh, sales of new product portfolio on a much larger scale? I think both the uh, both the hair oils category that we have launched, both the Amla, both the two products in Amla and the coconut, both of them, uh, the Amla coconut portfolios, both have been uh, tracking well and we see good potential there. In some of the almond drops extension, they are still restricted to modern trade and e-commerce. We see now we are looking at slowly getting them in GT and we are getting the larger products as far as the almond drop extension in. We think almond drop extension has a good potential as far as our expansion is concerned. Our digital ad has also now shifted towards more than more from almonds for the hair to almond for both hair and skin. So, so that is the agenda we are pushing. We also feel that the ethnic range that we we are launching and we'll keep. We just launched a small products just to test out the uh, some of the premises that we wanted to test out. Uh, some of the larger products are coming up uh, coming up in the next uh, three four quarters as far as the ethnic range. We feel uh, that with the Bajaj equity there are some space for us so the Indian uh, kind of products that we launch. So we see that even that has a good potential to scale up. So just to reiterate, in the hair oils, other than ADHO, both the coconut uh, amla on one side, few products on the almond drop extension range, and lastly the ethnic range, we feel that there is good potential for us to grow. Thank you, sir, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Swedish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Hi, Jadeep. Uh, Manu, sir. <coughs> Richard, uh, thanks for the opportunity and good morning. <clears throat> we'll start with uh, the core <clears throat> slide on four page, uh, slide number four, where you have given some numbers in terms of value and volume. Uh, though it is good that we are seeing some recovery in the rural, but my question is, what is happening on ground in our core HSN market? Because that's the key to our business. So this data at the national level looks promising, but is that? Uh, is reflecting a good recovery in our HSM market. That's my first question. Uh, would you want to answer? Would you want me to answer that, Sirish? Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the commentary that we were uh, giving for the last four or five quarters, while the hair oils market were down, the HSM market, especially the let's say the uh, Poorer markets, if I can call it, under quotes, UP, Bihar, MP were far worse than than the you know, overall uh, the thing. As the markets are recovering, we see a sharp rebound also happening there. So, so those markets are also recovering, uh, recovering well. So that is what is also getting reflected in our kind of. So, in in the community, I also mentioned the HSM markets have rebounded. So now the difference between the, let's say, the more wealthier states versus these states have also bridged quite a bit. So we see there is some uh, reflecting our business. So we feel going forward, while, uh, as we called out in the last uh, the thing, while rural has recovered, we don't see completely bound rural at this stage, at least. 
uh, we see urban uh, tracking pretty well and overall in the basket i think q2 q3 uh, we should see good numbers come so one follow up here when when i read your uh, slide the uh, value growth in rural is minus 0.3 and volume is minus 1.6 so is this number in the hsm market will be higher in terms of negative growth or it is positive no so so you're right so so it will still be a little higher in the rural market but earlier the gap used to be much much more now it has substantially reduced so so that narrowing has happened clearly yes. so you think uh, quarter to onwards this will be in a positive territory in terms of volume so that will be very difficult to predict i mean uh, that is getting into prediction zone so i would not like to predict that but uh, indications no, but are that the market market recovery is happening urban is still going well and rural negative is now flattened out now whether it will get into the positive territory or whether it will be hovering at similar levels is just a uh, just a conjecture yeah okay uh, uh second question is on uh, can you specify what is the non adho uh, contribution in terms of npd you said 23% growth is correct but what is the contribution and second part to it what is the volume growth because you said that uh, revenue growth uh, or the value growth in adho is 9% but what is the volume growth so so both are about say if you look at both so overall company as well as adho is about about 100 to 150 basis points higher as far as volume growth is concerned compared to value growth so both of them are that uh, as far as your contribution is concerned i answer that question it is about roughly about little higher than 14% is your uh, npd contribution <coughs> at the highest stage we had reached about 15% so now we are looking at about uh, a little more than 14% as far as uh, all your uh, all the non adho is concerned okay my, my last question on adho extension uh, we saw that uh, this quarter you have launched a serum uh, in the e-commerce so uh, similarly about uh, uh, 15 20 days before you launched dotion and these are the large packs at 400 ml and 600 ml so just wanted to understand uh, if you do these kind of uh, experiments uh, over next 2 3 years which what is the whole strategy i mean though we have a very strong equity why i'm asking this question this adh equity is very stronger in the north but when you are doing this product extension these are more uh, suitable to the urban markets so is that urban market is going to drive the different skus and the rural or maybe semi urban markets you will still work the adh to it is it a vice versa uh, strategy which we are trying to explain no so so i am not sure how the urban rural discussion comes in hsm and urban rural are not uh, contrary to each other i mean uh, hsm is not equal to rural if i can just add there are large uh, urban markets in in the hsm uh, territory as well having said that this strategy is a completely different strategy from amon drops on its own amon drops equity we saw we have done enough research to see that among some end of consumer they see this brand they having a right to win across many other categories in both body and hair care and that's how the products are getting launched uh, it is not serum that we launched serum was launched last year this is basically shampoo that we have launched uh, this year so lotion and shampoo are coming up uh, coming up uh, this uh, this quarter and the pricing that we have looked at in uh, both these products are in comparison with uh, uh, with a, a larger players for example if you look at the nourishing lotion it is just a little higher than let's say vaseline a little lower than nivea and as far as uh, let's say the uh, shampoo is concerned we have kept it a little uh, lower than dove but uh, similar to pantene and presumably so this is the uh, this is at the level that we are playing at at the premium not maybe absolutely at the with the leading player in terms of mrp but just uh, just about below that and we see that slowly with our digital spends that we are having we are see, seeing a lot of chatter happening as far as these products are concerned we have launched the smaller products of serum and uh, argan oil etc now we see that there is some good traction happening as far as bajaj almond drops non adho range so now we have that uh, these products are getting launched for that we feel that these products have a good potential to grow at a decent gross margin and that's where we will continue to invest that's helpful but uh, uh, let me all can talk to shilish may i request to join so let me complete the question so let him complete yeah please yeah. 
so i i'm i'm only saying that though it is happening that you are doing product extension and trying to squeeze the or extract the brand equity but is it not uh, lotion and shampoos is a two clutter category on one side the traditional or uh, the players which are existing in the market are struggling and all the market leaders are struggling and on the other side you have seen the d2c is also hitting one side so i i was just more curious that i mean i understand this is a relatively uh, very small market you are targeting in the modern trade but a uh, little longer view i think the uh, like, like these two categories looks very cluttered so that's why i'm uh, stretching this question maybe in the call you can answer this okay no, no. so i'll just i'll just quickly answer that this is the same question that we had raised when we had launched the soap that was a maximum cluttered category being the largest 20000 crore largest category at that time also the same point was made that we are not looking at just launching a particular soap or a lotion or a shampoo it's more the re- basket or bouquet of products that we are offering to the amon drop loyal user and we are seeing already seeing some traction as far as that built is concerned that is what we will built up and uh, we want to offer a basket of bajaj amon drop premium range of hair and uh, hair and body care products as far as the customer is concerned and i think in that journey these products do fit in and we see a good potential as far as that strategic direction is concerned this is just one of the legs of our strategy but we think there is a substantial one yeah. thank you jyoti bhai and all the patients uh, I, i really admire that thank you thank you yeah. yes thank you i request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant next question is from the line of ankush agarwal from search capital please go ahead Yeah, I thank you for taking my question. So, would it be possible for you to give the absolute numbers for NPD for this quarter and same quarter last year? Absolute numbers uh, revenues for NPD in the overall numbers, right? Yeah. Just give me a. Let me just uh, take the numbers out. Yeah. It is about uh, about thirty one crores in this year. in this quarter in this quarter and same quarter last year it will be how much in quarter last year it will be about close to 28 or hello uh, okay and just a clarification from what you mentioned in terms of subdued growth for npt during the quarter uh, which you said that last year we had some uh, major launches in the same quarters sorry oh, so sorry i was just uh, just uh, completing the thing q4 was about 24 crores and this um, is uh, yeah. q1 fy 23 was 28 you said right yeah that is correct because we had launched three three products at that time yeah. there was a coconut yeah so yeah so what onion launch uh, coconut yeah. uh, uh, there was a national launch for coconut as well as almond drop soap we had launched uh, in that quarter yeah. so that's where yeah yeah so what i was saying was that uh, as you stated that there was uh, initial launches of these products uh, so obviously there would be some inventory uh, push in the channel so would it be fair to assume that uh, the subdued group is primarily because of inventory uh, uh, issue between the primary and secondary and the secondaries would have still grown now at a much higher pace during the quarter for npd So yes, if you look at uh, secondary, I would not like to quote the secondary exact numbers, but yes, secondary because yeah. obviously these were all just from primary pipelining last year, and now that you are seeing there are no real large launches that have happened, uh, large product launches. So these are all more secondary that is being uh, tracking with uh, primary because one of the things that we have done last year itself is that uh, the clear focus for most of our incentives etc have been uh, shifted at the front line has been shifted to secondary. Earlier it used to be on primary. it is now completely on secondary so secondary for us becomes far more as a uh, as a uh, the thing because of the health of the inventory so that has been doing pretty well so this uh, secondary is clearly far higher than uh, primary yes okay okay that was very good thank you thank you next question is from the line of varun bang from ranstone investments please go ahead yeah uh, congratulations uh, for steady improvement and uh, great to see bunch of new launches my question is what is the th- what has been the thought process around uh, launch of new products how and why are we choosing these products and uh, what are the parameters and secondly um, on body lotion and hina what would be a strategy in terms of scaling both these products if you can just highlight okay 
So, uh, see, most of the strategy or direction that we are doing is, uh, um, there has been actually no change in our strategy or direction or whatever we are doing since the last eight quarters. We are very, very clear that we wanted to expand in the beyond the almond drops portfolio. First thing that we wanted to do is make us a much stronger team in terms of process system, automation, IT, etc. I think we have achieved that. I think one of the things that we are seeing in the last few months is better execution capability of the organization, which is what we wanted to build up. I mean, you don't do that overnight, so that is something that has got built up, and we think that that's a sustainable thing that we have been able to do for ourselves. Strategically, as far as we are concerned, a uh, few tracks we wanted to complete. Again, exactly the same thing that we have been talking in the last eight quarters. One is expansion into the various hair oils category, which we have done with our Amla and the coconut portfolio, maybe one or two products still left, we'll see whether gross margin wise there is enough money to be play, made in that. If so, then we'll go there. Uh, second range we wanted to expand is the almond drop extension. We said that we will do that for the next two, three years uh, in phased launches of products where we wanted to exploit the equity of almond drops. I've just explained that in the last uh, question. So, so that's the direction we are taking. Uh, <clears throat> Third, we said, was basically uh, basically looking at our uh, digital brands, some of the digital brands are pushing. We'll also look at the investments and how do we rationalize the digital brands for the third leg. The fourth leg, we, we see that uh, with the Bajaj equity that is there across markets, across the consumer mind space, we see that the Indianness products, Indian products, which is more the ethnic range that we have started with the Hena launch. Again, it will not be just the Hena launch, there will be more such products, and that's the portfolio we wanted to build up, uh, where we see that most of them will be GT-focused SQs. Uh, there is enough and more that we have because of our distribution. And the fifth leg, which we have been pushing, and we had said that we'll push it only from last year, for the last two, three quarters we have been pushing, is our international business. International business used to be about two, three percent. Now it's gone up to five. We see there is a huge potential for that international business to be a good, profitable international portfolio for us. So that is something that we have been pushing, and that's the other track that we are taking. So these are the four or five things we have been looking at and with this this kind of uh, strategic reason. Okay. And I think one of our manufacturing facilities is still under tax holiday period. When are the benefits of uh, low, low tax rate going to get normalized? 2027. 27. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rishabh Sasoria from Samisha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and for like, some good set of numbers. I have a few questions. So, on the direction side, as you have earlier mentioned, we want to grow in uh, double digit trajectory and double our revenues by SI 2829. Uh, do you still maintain that target? And is it purely based on uh, growing uh, by adding newer products to the portfolio? Is the guidance based on that? So, so it will be it will be a combination of multiple things that I just answered in the previous uh, question. So, one is obviously your core needs to keep growing. I mean, if ADHO gets stagnated with that kind of higher base, it will be very difficult for you to uh, you to grow at those kind of numbers. And even if you were to grow, then the kind of EBITDA that will churn out will be a little uh, difficult to uh, digest. So, ADHO, the focus for us has been to on ADHO, both in terms of distribution. I think there is still enough and more for distribution to be done. Last year, the market conditions were difficult, but the base work that has happened, I think, is slowly starting to reflect. So we have seen some two good quarters of ADHON going forward. I think we are quite bound about what ADHON delivers. Uh, in terms of distribution, there is still more work that is required. Uh, urban good work has happened, I would think, as far as this company is concerned, but rural, there is there's still more work to be done. I think that will now slowly shift uh, for us as a focus. Nothing to do with the market conditions as such, more for internally, I think there is some uh, scope for us. So ADHO will still remain a good, a good uh, growth driver for us, and we would like to continue to focus. Uh, the other thing that we have done on ADHO is make it a, be one of the key this thing is the brand has become stagnant in the mind of the customer. Can it become a little more uh, vibrant? I think that attempt of getting into digital space and now getting into AI pioneering work as far as AI is concerned, all that is slowly starting to move the um, move the needle a bit in terms of new customers, new age customers coming back. So we see a good traction as uh, that is concerned. 
uh, all these new products that we talked of will obviously be formed a part of our uh, strategy. Uh, international business clearly we see will be one of the growth drivers as far as uh, this number that we are talking about. And the fourth and which will always be uh, as and when it happens, if it were to happen, will be the inorganic growth, which we will continue to pursue, but we have our own parameters of measure within that if you are able to get in something, we will also pursue that. So all these tracks are open. Uh, with the last being um, open, but we don't know whether and when and how that will happen. Just uh, follow up to that. Sir. Discussions or any acquisitions that you are looking at, anything has improved at any stage? So that's why that's why I said. So you know, going through, uh, we we have a partner who's helping us look at targets. So we, in the last one year, we have evaluated a few targets. Uh, some of them we took it to advanced stage and. Uh, Nothing as of now has materialized. If, it, if something materialized, obviously you'll get them. And uh, my second question is on the KPEX and the ad spend run rate that we should look ahead with. Like, I don't think KPEX is on the end of 10 crore KPEX. I'm sorry to interrupt you, the audio is breaking. Hello? Is it better now? Yeah, I heard something on KPEX. Uh, yeah, know. so, so our annual run rate that you look at and also the annual run rate on the ad spends around 170, 180 crores. So as I said, 16 to 18% is what we have guided and that is what we are going to remain in the short term, at least short to mid term. And that we will see how it goes up. Uh, as far as uh, as far as uh, capex is concerned uh, we don't see any such large capex that is happening we are looking at a uh, looking at our manufacturing footprint as we discussed in the previous question in 27 our uh, uh, tax mat breakup uh, stops uh, in guwahati and uh, we have to look at logistic cost wise what is the best servicing depot both in terms of incoming raw material logistics as well as outgoing uh, outgoing fg uh, logistics cost, which is the best located uh, location to supply to our distribution center. So, so we are looking at a long-term uh, strategic direction, also looking at automation, etc. So, maybe a revamped facility. In terms of investment, it may not be a huge thing, but there will be some investment involved. But that's a little, little mid-term, if you ask me. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Jain from Marihan Capital. Please go ahead. Abhishek, may I request to unmute your line and go to your question, please? Abhishek, can you hear us? Maybe you can skip and come back to him later. Next question. Question is from the line of Kaushik Poddar from KB Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, see, there is a line item in your uh, profit and loss statement, which is royalty. Royalty, I, I guess from the figures, I can figure out that it's around 1% of the turnover. Is this true, number one? And number two, who owns this royalty? Does the Kushagra Bajaj family owns the royalty or other Bajaj members are also part of it? The Bajaj resource. So Bajaj resource, Hello. which... Uh, which holds the uh, holds the trademark gets the royalty, and Bajaj Resource is uh, is owned by Kushagra Bajaj family, or there are other members of the cousins or brothers or whatever. They are also part yes, of it. it. No, it is held by the Kushagra Bajaj family. So it's exclusively owned by Kushagra Bajaj family, right? That is correct. Okay. Okay. And second thing is that suppose I mean all these uh, supermarkets and all this thing. When I go to a say Reliance Smart Store, uh, they have their own brands of say coconut oil and also almond drop, uh, almond oil. So uh, uh, to compete against the own brand in a in a supermarket, doesn't it become a difficult issue for you guys? So again, uh, uh, very different products. If you look at almond drops. Almond drops is actually not so much a specific ingredient driven, it's not a straightforward product like coconut, which is a 100% ingredient driven product. So almond drops is more, sells more on brand duty. So there, if you look at most of the stores who have launched almond as their the things, you know, you mentioned one, one uh, retailer, but there are other retailers who have also done, they have not really faced much success. It has also not been faced by many other competitors.
appreciate those who have also launched products. Some of them have even withdrawn. But Almond is more a um, more a brand story rather than an ingredient story, so to say. There obviously is a key ingredient, but that's uh, that's not what, what it's. The brand about. plays a much bigger role, right? And plays a much bigger role, absolutely. Okay, coconut but what about say coconut oil, which is a more a commodity end of the product? Yes. So coconut, you are absolutely right. It is a commodity. It does also get sold on price. But we have we have observed, and you are absolutely right, where there is a very large player. Uh, then there is a then there is a um, store brand, and then you have a, a brand of yours which comes in. We have seen that even in this interesting dynamics, the brand equity of Bajaj somewhere holds good. One thing that comes up is clearly the quality of the product. On a little longer term. I think the consumer who's coming back for a repurchase clearly is coming back for the quality of the product. Uh, now, for the consumer in this particular case, it's a real uh, little easy solution to make because they know it's a 100% pure product. They just need to determine uh, determine whether that 100% purity is how as far as they perceive it or not. Once they see that, that value equation comes clearly in mind. There, for some reason, we have seen that as hair oil companies or oil companies directly, they seem to have a little better equity than the store brands itself. Not at any moment am I saying the store brands don't sell, but somewhere we seem to have a slight advantage over the store brands. So even where we would exist as a third brand or a second brand, whichever way you see it, against the store brand versus a very large brand, we still seem to be making good headway. And this is a more conceptual question. See, you are a much smaller company than the bigger players, say Marico or whatever. I'm just taking Marico's name. Uh, so, uh, with the with the advent of say e-commerce and uh, organized retail, uh, you have the same reach, say, as uh, Marico. So, does it uh, give you that much of a leverage to increase your turnover because your overheads are much lower than that of Marico? I mean, is it a different dynamics uh, with the e-commerce and um, uh, and the organized sector there? As far as the overhead is concerned, it will be the other way around. You are a larger player, economies of scale will uh, bestow in you rather than uh, as a smaller player. So, okay, okay. why you will not have an advantage? But uh, yes, uh, if you are talking of being a level playing field, yes. At least in the form of a reach, it is the same, I guess, right? That's For Marie Corfield. Yeah, so as a as a level playing field, yes, the e-commerce and modern trade would uh, would be a little bit of an advantage. But what on a strategic basis, if you want to really scale up the product and these kind of commodity products, if you want to scale up, then obviously GT has to be one of your focus areas, which is where in the last one year we have been scaling up pretty well, have got good responses from this thing, and we clearly see that distribution can play a large role in this further uh, scope as far as we are concerned. Because modern trade and e-commerce will hit some point, some kind of a glass ceiling as far as uh, these products are concerned. Uh, and my last question, which is that the one growth vector you delineated was this uh, in, is your international foray. So if you can uh, say something as to how you are trying to differentiate or what is your game plan for this international foray? International, if you look at compared to any any FMCG company in our uh, sector, I mean, easily you are looking at a 20 to 30 percent contribution coming out of international is not a really really a large task. So, so task it is it in our mind was always a low hanging fruit. It's not now a low hanging fruit. It always was. It's a question of prioritizing. With so many things to do, what do you prioritize? So we had said that international priority we will do once we have got our got our act together a little bit in the uh, local market, especially in terms of execution, in terms of capability building, etc., execution uh, capabilities. Because execution capability is the most difficult uh, as far as uh, building is concerned. That, now that we are a little confident that uh, execution capabilities in domestic markets have become a little better, we see that international uh, we can look at. So certain markets, the Middle East markets, we see there is a lot of potential Middle East uh, Africa. So there we have been focusing. We have been getting great numbers as far as Middle East Africa is concerned. So newer distributors in Saudi, getting into uh, getting into e-commerce in UAE and uh, uh, distribution change in UAE. Uh, other Gulf markets, Qatar, Kuwait, all of them now doing well. Some now forays into Africa. So so that we have started well. We look at whether we need to look at some 
uh, inorganic growth there, etc. But at least organically, there is enough and more to be done as far as Middle East, etc. is concerned. Rest of the world markets, through exports itself, uh, we see a lot of potential. That has been doing well for the last maybe six, eight quarters. Uh, the highest profitable uh, segment as far as we are concerned, much higher than general trade. So, so that we are pushing, some new countries have been added in that Malaysia has been doing. So some of that is coming. Uh, Bangladesh, we see, is a large market dominated by a very, very large player. It will be not an easy market to crack, so we have started our local operations there. We are scaling up, uh, we are putting our people, entire team is getting built up. So it will be a slow grind, but we see that also as a large potential. So, so overall, if you look at, uh, I think that number of 20 percent, 20, 25 percent, a uh, little more mid to long term is clearly doable, and that is the direction we are taking. We have already scaled up from about two, three percent to five percent now, and I think this journey will just continue forward. This 20, 25 percent of your turnover, as in the, as in other players, is that's what you are uh, 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 indicating, is it? Nothing to do with other players. With our internal numbers, 20-25% of contribution coming out of international business on a long-term basis. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nondi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And now in the conference, what is the management for closing comments? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining and, uh, uh, and joining in. I think this quarter, uh, for the second time, we saw that uh, our execution skills have little become a little better. In strategically or in terms of process improvement, systems, etc., I don't think we had any doubts or where we were going. It's just that execution capability, we wanted to scale it up because we are now looking at far more robust uh, business models with newer products getting into newer channels, getting into newer geographies, getting into uh, retailing much more, and not just be more focused on wholesale and uh, through. So that, uh, in terms of change in people, both at the top as well as in terms of field force, in terms of training, development, a lot of work, effort has gone in uh, behind training of our field force. And I think slowly that has started yielding results. Uh, yielding results, which gives us the confidence that going forward, we should be able to look at consistent growth as far as the organization is concerned. And as we scale up our business, I think the EBITDA should anyway follow directly. So, so this now slowly is, uh, we are seeing the pieces slowly coming in place. And for the next few quarters, we would like to take this journey going forward in a similar direction. So thank you. Thanks all of you for bestowing confidence on us. And have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.